Hi everybody, Simon here again. Solomon's Tales, next episode, whatever it is. Thanks for coming along and watching. So, we're... Solomon's coming to the end of his um, tourist extension. Um, and Ning is now with him. Um, Solomon has got to start thinking about what he's going to do. The year coming up for two months already it's it's flying by he has been playing pool competitions are doing quite well frozen is living in the same block as him who's his friend now and Ning's with him so Solomon thinks he's got a a couple of weeks left and then he's gonna head Cambodia uh, is the plan. Talks to Ning in the morning um, and starts trying to find out uh, what her plans are and they talk. Um, Ning is just mad on motorbikes and she wants to tour about. She doesn't work for any bar or anything. She gets money from that boyfriend that's supposed to be now the ex but Solomon is tending to believe that they're still together but she's saying not but he's still giving her money so she's got an income she doesn't need money and Solomon's not giving her any money um, pool competitions there's these killer pool competitions every week there's two maybe three a week dotted around probably more in this day and age probably a lot more He says to Ning that he's got two weeks left, he's going to try and play a few competitions, see if he can raise some money, and then he's thinking of heading to Cambodia. Um, doesn't know for how long. Now Ning has said to him, I would love to go to Cambodia. She's got a passport, she can do it on her without visas and things. Back then definitely, don't know about today. But I'm pretty sure a Thai person can go to Cambodia with no problem with a passport. She expressed an interest in joining him and doing a bit, seeing a bit of Cambodia. Now, that's fine. That's absolutely fine by Solomon uh, having a companion so gorgeous and loves motorbikes, and it'd be so much better than being on your own. Um, he wouldn't be able to explore the ladies of Cambodia, but he's not here really for that. So he says, well, maybe we could do this. He's telling Ning, maybe we could. Um, but for the next couple of weeks, I need to do some competitions and things. Um, she says that she's got some stuff to sort out, but she would like to do that with him. Um, and she then suggests that she gave her room up with the girls and she'll come and stay with Solomon um, and she'll kick around with him and Frozen who goes to the competitions with him um, and they'll all become a happy little unit <laughs> Solomon's fine with that you know he's got no there's, there's nothing set in concrete and why not so for the next two weeks Frozen and Ning get to know each other and they get on really well um, Frozen's got her fella that's again giving her money her and Solomon aren't boyfriend girlfriend and they're just friends um, and she's getting a little bit of money on some of the competitions he's sharing it with with her because Frozen's boyfriend's only sending her at the time was only sending her um, a couple of thousand baht a week which was enough back then, but didn't give her much of a life. So if Solomon could get second place or first place in some of these little contests, she can get some more money. So she was really up for it, it's free money. Ning had money, her guy was, <sighs> later on Solomon found out that her guy was sending her about 30,000 baht a month. Back then the exchange rate at 75 baht to the pound. 
So she was getting loads of money. She didn't need money. So that was cool. So yeah, over the next couple of weeks, they would, him and Ning would wander around, eat, drink a bit, frozen as well, and then they'd go to these contests. Um, out of those two weeks, the first week, Solomon got his, uh, let's say his ass kicked. Two guys that he'd not seen before appeared at the bars and they were on the same, going to the same bars, the same competitions. Both these guys were from Germany and they were both brilliant. Turns out they were snooker players, but they were great at pool. And those two guys, the first week, won everything. And Solomon was getting third and fourth and fifth places in these competitions and did no good at all. But then those two German guys went somewhere else. Second week, Solomon won three competitions in the week and raised about 35,000 baht, which was amazing, amazing money. All because those German guys had gone and the other guys weren't around, did well. That was enough money to start a little adventure. Um, Frozen was a bit cheesed off that he was heading to Cambodia. He did say to her, do you want to come as well? But she, she, she didn't want to. Um, her guy was due back anyway. But she was a little bit cheesed off, but never mind. And the two weeks passed. Ning and Solomon were getting on great. Um, unofficially boyfriend, girlfriend, let's say. Because I'm sure she had a boyfriend. The two weeks passed. Solomon took his bike back. Um, he gave up the room. He only had a rucksack with stuff. He had no possessions. Now what he did, he found one of these visa companies in Patea that had vans that would take foreigners to the Cambodian border. I think he called. I think it was called the Welcome Bridge. Um, would take them there for the day, do the visas, and drive them back to Patea. And Solomon got hold of one of these companies and said, "Could." He just paid for a one-way trip to the border in the minivans for him and Ning. And they were fine. They had spare seats. It was free money for them. No problem. So that's what he did. He put a rucksack on his back. And Ning did the same. Now Ning had a bit more stuff. So she dumped her stuff with a friend, another girl. Some room somewhere. Put a rucksack on her back. Passports in the pocket. Off they went. Off to the Cambodian border border and leaving Thailand. So this is Solomon leaving Thailand. Hmm. They went over the border, no problem. Um, I believe it was a, a 30 day visa. Could have even been a 90 day, but anyway. Solomon was in his mind, he was thinking he wanted to go to Phnom Penh and then he wanted to ride a bike down south and along the coast a bit and look at this Shalukville that he heard about. That was the plan. And then possibly if he'd been on his own he would have probably gone east and gone into Vietnam from that point and then travelled all around Vietnam. But maybe a later date. So they get the van to the border, get over the border, get the visas um, and find somewhere to eat. And it's a bit of a crazy place around the border, uh, especially that one border, the Welcome Bridge. There's just people everywhere trying to, any way they can to make money off you, or hawkers, people trying to sell stuff, beggars, there's everything there. Casinos, it's a bit of a strange, strange zone. Market, selling sort of counterfeit cigarettes and all sorts of weird stuff going on there. It wasn't very pleasant, and it isn't a very pleasant place still to this day around there. So they they grab some food, street food on the side of the road, a few hundred metres on the other side of the border. And then the plan, uh, they'd find a bus. Had someone had a chat to a, a sort of tuk-tuk driver. There was a, a bus like depot station just up the road. It was about half a mile. And there was shops and bits so they just walked up 
found this depot. Um, now this was probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. It was quite early because they set off early. They found the right bus to Pompen. Um And it was pennies. It was, it was pennies. Now, Solomon had been warned by um, a couple of people that to take American dollars. So he had exchanged some money, cash point card in his pocket and a few dollars, American dollars. And he used dollars pretty much all around Cambodia. It seemed to go down better. They uh, jumped on a bus, found a bus, off to Pompen, early evening by the time they got across to Pompen, with traffic and stuff. Bit of a long journey, but I don't think it was that far kilometre wise. Pulled into Pompen, and 15 years ago, Pompen was a lot different to how it is now. A lot different. Wasn't as developed, um, much quieter. There really wasn't that many bars. Uh, in Pompen then, just a couple of foreigner bars. Solomon had done a little bit of research online. He'd found a couple of bars that foreigners owned and that's where he could get information and uh, work out how to get around Cambodia because he'd never been um, before actually into Cambodia and gone into Cambodia as such. And like anyone arriving at a new country, uh, if you don't do much research, it's, it can be a bit sort of daunting. Ning hadn't been to Cambodia. Um, so, eye opener. Neither of them spoke the Cambodian language. <laughs> so it was, it didn't even know one word, I don't think. And it is a different language to Thai. The people, lovely, lovely people. Um, but uh, strange, a lot poorer back then, a lot poorer, poverty. They uh, got off the bus, had a bit of a walk around, found a cheap hotel, like a guest house, and it was, it was cheaper than Thailand, it was equivalent of about 700 Thai baht. Checked in, seems a nice enough hotel, um, seems secure. That's always the worry when you go into a country with a lower living standard of security and watching your back. So the plan, I've been traveling all day, long old trek. Um, they just go out, find some food and uh, check out in the morning around. So they did. And then Solomon had a lovely, another lovely night. <laughs> well, he had been for the last couple of weeks, but yeah, Ning was uh, an amazing, very, very attractive woman. Amazing. Not wife material, though, I don't think. Too much of a problem to be a wife with those looks. <laughs> You'd be constantly fighting off the guys. But she was into Solomon, and Solomon was into her. Everything was good. It was all exciting. It was like and adventure together. Morning came, they went off to find these couple of bars owned by foreigners and they found the one bar. The guy running that bar was called Jeff and uh, he was from uh, Scotland, Glasgow side of Scotland I believe it was, very broad, <laughs> Glaswegian accent. Ning couldn't understand him at all. Very funny. Anyway, Solomon, they got ordered some drinks. It was morning, about 10, 10, 30 in the morning. And Solomon quizzed uh, Jeff on Cambodia, getting around. Where could he get some bikes? And he indicated to Jeff that he wanted to travel all the way down to the south to Schluckville and um, maybe across a bit and then come up and see some of the the sites, killing fields and some temples and bits and pieces. Jeff pulled out loads of maps and he'd, he'd done this himself many times, these trips. And he said some of the roads, again, this is 15 years ago, some of the roads were terrible going south. There wasn't a huge amount of stuff there. 
the biggest problem was that there was no real places to stay and it would take a really really long day on a bike to get down uh, to Schluckville with the road services back then and but it was going to be a hell of a trek um, nowadays I think it's a lot simpler much better road structure and a lot more buildings and hotels and guest houses around but Jeff said there was, there was a couple of places you could stop if you went on certain routes he was so helpful brilliant absolutely brilliant guy then Solomon said bikes we want some bikes now Jeff's advised him that there was a, a, a lady just around the corner who rented bikes he could have medium size big small anything this woman had everything but recommended to Solomon that he take uh, Honda the little Honda waves and this video is going on I'm sorry <laughs> pick this up pick this up on the next one I'll catch you soon bye